Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs in Switzerland. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a 1 to 64 scale Hot Wheels Bedtime. It's a fantasy car and for the life of me I can't envision what this has to do with bedtime. Nonetheless, these odd castings need some love too. And today is this little guy's turn on the workbench. I got this one in a mail call from Shotty's Diecast in Luxembourg. And as I'm editing this video, look what arrived. Another enormous box from Eve in Luxembourg. So it looks like there's an unboxing in my immediate future. Stay tuned for that. He's one of the real generous people that I've become online friends with through this hobby. By the way, Eve's one and only request was to restore and customize the cars and that I continue to give them away to the kids when I'm finished. Done and done. Thanks again, Eve, for keeping me knee-deep in inventory. <laughs> I sure appreciate it. Eve is going to be participating in my Porsche 3 Invitational, so I suspect there might be something Stuttgart-related inside that big box, along with a bunch of other goodies. Appreciate it, my friend. The bedtime casting is all broken down now. It's a Larry Wood design, and it debuted in the 2004 First Edition's Cruise series. That's C-R-O-O-Z-E, Cruise. Take a closer look at the cab, and you'll recognize that it's loosely based off a late 50s Dodge Swepside pickup truck. There's an awful lot of chrome involved here, and I'm going to strip it off with some oven cleaner. Just a little blast. I have my spray booth ventilator on and I keep it in a little closed plastic box for about the same amount of time that it takes my paint stripper to remove the red and white enamel. Also under the strong ventilation fan. Sped up here. I just take the formerly chrome piece out and give it a rinse and there's down to black plastic. I'm going to end up re-chroming a good portion of that later on. And the casting body requires a couple moments with a toothbrush to strip away the paint that's come loose. Well, this one's about 20 years old now and obviously had been well played with, so a little bit of careful attention with a couple of Dremel tool attachments. I start with the wire brush smooths it out, takes away any of the residual paint that the paint stripper didn't get. I change attachments. To, this is kind of a little bullet shaped one to get inside. Then on to the Scotch-Brite wheel. It really does make a difference in the finish. And finally some 0000 steel wool and it's ready to go to the paint booth. But first a heads up. For this month's Four Horsemen project, I'm doing a buddy build with Tom from Caliber 50 Customs. I've chosen this Lesney Daimler bus for the Dibs Paint It Green March theme. I'm number 23 in the Silva Challenge. That's coming mid-March, as is my third annual Porsche Invitational, which you're all invited to participate in. I'll post an update video in the next couple of days to bring you up to speed. This week's community shout out goes to Mark Smith who recently discovered my YouTube channel and I have reciprocated by visiting his and I'm leaving a link in the description so you can find him as well. Get all subbed up and help him to get a good boost in both viewers and subscribers from this shout out. Both the degreasing and the primer stages are prerequisite steps before applying a nice paint job and once again today I found the paint that I thought would be most appropriate for this job was in a spray can and so what I do is decant it into a little plastic cup as you see here and I let that degas for a while and then I can apply it with my airbrush and get a little lighter touch, a little more control which I prefer. Then I clear coat the purple metallic, I let that dry overnight, masked it up, shot some high gloss white for highlights with my airbrush and I just unmasked that and got really nice sharp lines today with a little bit of luck. Now remember all that chrome I stripped off with the oven cleaner which was fast and easy to do. Oh, 
<laughs> I'm reapplying some chrome to the midsection, the engine department here. What I really wanted out of all of that was a black interior. That requires some touch-up and some black highlight areas so it's not all chrome on the inside. I do that with some hand brushing and semi-gloss black paint. I'm happier with this look now in this very prominent part of the casting. While I work on highlighting the taillights with some Tamiya Clear Red, let me get back to Larry Wood, who from 1969 to 2016 was the chief designer at Hot Wheels. He could create more cool cars in a year than a designer at one of Detroit's big three manufacturers could do in an entire career. From low slung mercs to high riding pickups, Larry has designed it all for Hot Wheels. As far back as he can remember, he loved to draw cars. So when it came time to go to school, Larry enrolled at Art Center College and naturally he majored in automotive design. After graduation, he was drafted by the Ford Motor Company and moved to the automobile big leagues in Detroit. Ultimately, Larry decided he missed the warm climes of California where he could drive his street rod all year round. So, in 1968, he moved back to SoCal, where he worked as a designer in the aerospace industry. Soon, however, he heard about an opening to design and create Hot Wheels cars, decided to give it a try, and it stuck. Larry has created some of the most well-known Hot Wheels cars, including the 49 Merc, Ramblin' Wrecker, which originally featured his home phone number on the rear quarter panel of the truck, the Bone Shaker, Purple Passion, and this lesser-known Bedtime that I'm working on today. When asked to pick his favorite Hot Wheels design, Larry's answer is always, my next is my best. Thanks, Larry, for all the creations and the years of enjoyment you've given to us as Hot Wheels enthusiasts, collectors, and now hobby customizers. In the meantime, a nice new set of real rubber monoblock silver spoke wheels have been sized, fitted, and attached. It is looking good. These are 10 millimeters down from 10 and a half or 11 that came off originally. They look great and it actually serves to give it an even lower slammed profile than before which I really like, especially on this casting design with the long swept tail. Time to put it all back together now that things are clear coated and cured, beginning with the blue windshield, which doesn't look totally out of place here today on the purple and white. Rechromed the grill, touched up that engine, made it look really spiffy, I think. And here comes the plastic interior with the new set of monoblock wheels on. I was able to drill out the post in the front so I can reconnect that with a 256 screw. But in the back, there was no post to speak of, so I'm just using some super glue to affix it there, and that's got a good permanent hold. Let's have a closer look. I like the paint combo with the metallic purple against the high gloss white, and it's got a beautiful sheen to it. The re-chromed engine with black highlights around look good. Minimal detail on the undercarriage with the channel logo. New set of wheels on there. It's a great roller, and I think it'll make a fantastic toy for any little boy or girl. It was definitely well played with, as you can tell from the scuffs and scratches on it, love marks, as we call them. I think I breathed some new life into the little bedtime with this recreation and hopefully it'll race again on a carpet somewhere, maybe on an orange track with a jump on it. I don't keep them or display them. I want to get them back into circulation again and inspire a new generation of kids that'll play with the Hot Wheels cars. So in accordance with Eve's wishes, which are perfectly aligned with the ethos of my YouTube channel, this gets packed carefully in a blister and off it goes to my local Goodwill store, where I hope it'll bring a smile to the face of a little boy or girl. 
Thanks for visiting my channel today. Thank you, Eve, for the bedtime casting. Drive carefully, everybody. It's coffee time.